Why Genghis Khan Refused to Invade India India in the 11th and 12th century was the most prosperous country globally, accounting for over a third of the entire world's GDP. A land of incredible wealth and culture, it was ruled by the Turkic Mamluk dynasty. Northern India was under the control of Shamsuddin Ittutmish, the third sultan of the Mamluk dynasty. So then why did Genghis Khan refuse to invade India? Hello and welcome back to Eccentric History. Today we'll be diving into the fascinating enigma of why the greatest conqueror in history Genghis Khan chose not to invade India. If you love unraveling mysteries from the past, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Let's get started. Genghis Khan's Background Before we attempt to shed light on the perplexing question at hand, let us first contextualize the background of Genghis Khan. Born as Temujin in 1162, this mythical figure's life and accomplishments have enthralled and captivated the world's imagination for centuries. His ascent from impoverished origins to becoming one of history's most successful and feared conquerors is a saga of determination, resilience and the indomitable spirit of the Mongolian people. During his formative years, Temujin faced numerous adversities and hardships. After his father, Yasugui, was slain by a rival Tatar tribe, the young Temujin and his family were deserted by their clan forcing them to fend for themselves in the arduous Mongolian steppe. However, against all odds, Temujin survived and succeeded in unifying the warring Mongol tribes under his command. At Akuraltai, a traditional Mongol assembly in 1206, Temujin was proclaimed as Genghis Khan, which means universal ruler. This marked the beginning of his arduous quest to establish the most extensive, contiguous empire the world had ever seen. Genghis Khan's military campaigns were characterized by meticulous planning, rapid and coordinated cavalry assaults, and psychological warfare. His troops were disciplined and adaptable, capable of fighting in various terrains and climates. Genghis Khan initiated a series of conquests, commencing with Western Jia and Jin Dynasty in northern China. He employed a variety of tactics to subjugate his enemies, ranging from siege warfare and deception to diplomacy and alliances. His army's martial prowess, coupled with his political acumen, enabled them to emerge triumphant in these campaigns. Following the conquest of northern China, Genghis Khan turned his attention to the west, setting his sights on the Karakitan Khanate, a Central Asian empire that had controlled the Silk Road for over a century. The Mongol forces promptly overcame Karakitan Khanate in 1218, thereby further expanding their empire and control over crucial trade routes. Battle of Indus The year was 1221 and the Battle of the Indus proved to be a critical juncture in the Mongol Empire's history, as well as for the Indian subcontinent's fate. Prior to this conflict, the Mongol horde under Genghis Khan's leadership had already claimed a vast expanse of land in Central Asia, including the formidable Khwarezmian Empire. The outcome of the decisive battle would determine whether the Mongol forces would continue their unstoppable march into India or shift their focus elsewhere. The events leading up to this epic showdown date back to 1219, where the Khwarezmian Empire dealt a fateful blow to Genghis Khan's emissaries, causing him to seethe with anger. The Great Khan wasted no time in mounting a full-scale invasion of the empire, leaving nothing but devastation in his wake. As the Mongol armies gave chase to the fleeing Khwarazmian Shah Jalal ad-Din Mingburnu, they eventually found themselves on the banks of the mighty Indus River. The Indus River, with its position as a natural boundary separating the collapsing Khwarazmian Empire and the Indian subcontinent, would serve as the backdrop for a pivotal encounter between the Mongol forces and the Khwarazmian remnants under the leadership of Jalal ad-Din. The latter aimed to establish a stronghold in India that could serve as a base for future reconquest of his lost empire. However, Genghis Khan had his sights set on crushing any lingering Khwarazmian resistance and obliterating any potential threats to his newly acquired domains. Finally, in 1221, the two armies clashed 
on the banks of the Indus River. The Mongol forces under the direct leadership of Genghis Khan vastly outnumbered the remaining Khwarezmian troops. Nevertheless, Jalal ad-Din was an adept strategist and a gallant leader who refused to yield to the Mongol juggernaut. Instead, he opted to mount a valiant last stand against seemingly insurmountable odds. The ensuing battle was an intense affair with both sides displaying unwavering grit and determination. Jalal ad-Din's forces, despite being severely outnumbered, fought with remarkable resilience, inflicting significant losses on the Mongol ranks. The Khwarezmian prince exhibited outstanding personal bravery on the battlefield, inspiring his troops and engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy. Yet, despite their best efforts, the outcome of the conflict was never in doubt. The Mongol forces, with their overwhelming numerical superiority and seasoned warriors, eventually overwhelmed the Khwarezmian resistance. As the Mongol soldiers closed in, Jalal ad-Din made a daring escape by leaping into the Indus River on horseback evading capture and vanishing into the Indian subcontinent. The Battle of the Indus marked a turning point in the Mongol quests. Genghis Khan, deeply impressed by the bravery and steadfastness of the Jalal ad-Din, opted not to pursue the Khwarezmian prince into India. Instead, he chose to consolidate his empire's grip on the vast territories he had already conquered. The decision, influenced by the treacherous terrain and unfamiliar environment of the Indian subcontinent, would alter the course of history for both the Mongol Empire and India. A man with such power and might, one would imagine he would move on and not back down from any fight. Then why did he not invade India? Let's look at some theories. Possible theories Genghis Khan's decision not to invade India following the Battle of the Indus has been the subject of much speculation and debate among historians. Several theories have been put forth to explain this pivotal decision, which ultimately spared India from the devastation that characterized the Mongol conquests in other parts of the world. One theory suggests that Genghis Khan decided against invading India in order to consolidate his empire's hold on the vast territories he had already conquered. At the time, the Mongol Empire was stretched thin, and Genghis Khan may have recognized that he needed to establish a stable administration in the newly acquired lands. By focusing on consolidation, he could ensure the long-term survival and prosperity of his empire. Another theory is that the difficult terrain and climate of the Indian subcontinent played a significant role in Genghis Khan's decision not to invade. The mountainous region of the Hindu Kush, as well as the deserts and jungles of India, posed substantial logistical challenges for the Mongol armies. These difficulties combined with the unfamiliar climate could have deterred the Great Khan from launching a full-scale invasion. Furthermore, the Mongols, who primarily hailed from the steppes of Central Asia, may have been wary of venturing into the relatively unknown lands of the Indian subcontinent. Genghis Khan and his advisors may have lacked sufficient knowledge about the political, social and cultural landscape of India, making it difficult to assess the potential risks and reward of an invasion. This lack of information could have contributed to their decision to focus on other, more familiar territories. The fierce resistance put up by the Khwarezmian forces under Jalal ad-Din during the Battle of the Indus may also have influenced Genghis Khan's decision. Impressed by the courage and determination of the Khwarezmian prince, the Great Khan may have decided that further pursuit of Jalal ad-Din and his forces into India would be too costly and time-consuming, considering the formidable opposition they had faced thus far. One more theory emphasizes the role of Genghis Khan's successors in shaping the Mongol Empire's relationship with India. While Genghis Khan himself did not invade India, his successors, including Kublai Khan and Tamer, would eventually launch invasions into the subcontinent. It is possible that Genghis Khan intended to leave the invasion of India to his successors as part of a long-term strategy to expand the empire. Lastly, some historians suggest that diplomatic considerations were playing a role in Genghis Khan's decision not to invade India. The Indian subcontinent was home to several powerful and influential kingdoms, such as the Delhi Sultanate, which could have formed alliances against the Mongol Empire by choosing not to invade India. Genghis Khan may have avoided the creation of a formidable coalition of enemies that could have jeopardized his empire's security. The most likely reason The most likely reason is probably a strategic one. Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol conqueror, made a strategic decision not to invade India, which can be construed as a shrewd move that prioritized the long-term stability and expansion of the Mongol Empire.
The vastness of the empire was already formidable, encompassing a significant portion of Central Asia, Persia and parts of Eastern Europe. And its rapid expansion posed significant administrative and logistical challenges. By opting not to invade India, Genghis Khan enabled his empire to concentrate on the consolidation of the newly acquired territories. A strategic move that was pivotal in establishing a stable administration and ensuring the continued prosperity of the empire. Integration of these regions secured trading routes and maintaining control over the diverse populations that now fell under the rule required substantial investment of time and resources. Moreover, the decision not to invade India allowed Genghis Khan to avoid overstretching his military resources, concentrating on the consolidation of existing territories, ensuring that he could maintain a strong and unified force, ever ready to counteract potential threats or uprisings. This approach permitted the Mongol Empire to expand sustainably and preserve its status as a global power for many generations to come. Genghis Khan's choice serves as a reminder that a focus on sustainable growth and stability can lead to lasting success and a powerful legacy. If you found this video informative and engaging, please consider liking the video and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. We always appreciate your input and the opportunity for further discussion. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring history.